Yeah. Christian. Yes. Where are we going? Make a uh, left up here. Yeah, make a left. Freedom. 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 Woo! Who wants to make things interesting by opening my door? If this was Christian driving, I completely know what he would have done. I know what I would have done. I, yeah, you I would have made an effective oh, turn. Yeah. Oh. oh, God. That's all right. You are as near as turned attention. Whoa. You are so near. Beloved, that's a word for our generation right there. It is shameful even to speak of wickedness. It is shameful even to speak of the darkness. I believe we're living in a generation where because of social media, we are spending so much time complaining about the darkness that we are losing time for the kingdom by not focusing on the light of God. And we need to focus on being messengers of the light rather than spreading rumors of darkness. Have no fellowship with the darkness. It's shameful even to speak about it. In the name of art, in the name of artistic endeavor, how often are we entertained by immorality? How often do we let things pass through our eye gate and our ear gate? How often do we speak of things which have nothing to do with the light, but we say, but it was a great movie. It was a great TV show. Even though everybody was hopping in and out of bed with everybody else, we go, it was funny, wasn't it? Beloved, is it funny to the Lord? Is it funny to a God who said, there is a covenant that a man makes with his wife for the rest of their lives, and I will bless that covenant. And the marriage bed is to be kept pure. And in the name of entertainment, we fill our minds with the darkness of the values of the culture that surrounds us. Have nothing to do. It's shameful even to speak of these things. Which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, he looks at the church, he says, you are light. He looks at the church in, the, in Ephesus, he says, you are light, but you're asleep in the light. You're asleep in the light. In the darkness, there is only one solution, and it's not to curse the darkness, it's to turn on the light. And the church is the light. The believers in Jesus are the light. And he says, but you're asleep. And the Lord is saying, wake up, you who sleep. Get out of bed. Remember who you are and the Lord will shine upon you. You do your part. You wake up. When the alarm goes off, Corey spoke about this, didn't he? This after, yesterday afternoon, we don't like alarms. From the fear of having nothing From a life of worldly passion Deliver me, oh God From the need to be understood 
when you go to get married, you look at her and say, I am never, ever leaving you. Beloved, I want to say this. I have, I, I'm a pastor. I have middle-aged men come to me all the time. I just don't feel it anymore. You don't know what I've been through. I'm so disillusioned. I go, I, I, I appreciate you. I love you. I'm sure you're disillusioned. But I need to let you know something. Your wife was disillusioned on day two of the honeymoon. She was disillusioned faster than you were, I guarantee it. The whole thing she looked forward to her whole life, she went through the ceremony and then went, oh my gosh. You can deal with five years of disillusionment. You can press into God and find a love that's bigger than your emotions. A love that's bigger than your fleeting emotions. Let me tell you something, I've got a vision in my life. I've got a glorious vision. You know what it is? It's not to die as a Bible school president or associate director of an international movement. That means nothing. You want to know what I live for? It's this. To grow old with my wife. I want to be 85 years old. 90 years old in a rocking chair. With my three sons. Their three wives and my 50 grandchildren running all around us. I don't care how they get them. They just need to get them. I want a lot of them running around. And I've got a vision. Here's what it is. My grandsons running around all around me. There's grandpa. He's crazy. He's lost his mind. <laughs> and he's goofy. But he loves Jesus. He tells the best stories. And then I can't wait as my little granddaughters run around. They look at their grandma. They go, oh. You see, grandma. Grandma. She's beautiful. Do you know what? He always hears her prayers. Whatever she asks for, he gives it to her. I want to be just like her. You know what? I can live through five years of disillusionment, ten years of disappointment, four years of struggle here, three years of struggle there for that. Why? You know what it says? Greater than wealth and riches is a good name. I want to leave children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren like a beautiful army in love with Jesus marching forth in his glorious light.
<laughs> he's like, you need Jesus. And he's like, I need Jesus. Wow. <laughs> and she's like, okay, we're going to burn up your snakes. She's like, we're going to, like, so they dig a hole, they put all the snakes to burn up the snakes. He becomes Christian. It's not even a fight. Like, the demons just wow. got out. Like, it wasn't even like, whoa. And he had, a, you can imagine the amount of power that he had. Yeah, I tried to stay away from the first session. So, what time? Lord, we say that you are good, and it is better for us when we are with you. It is better for us when we are set apart, when we are with you, with all of our hearts. We want to stand in your counsel. We want to listen to your word. So take away all distractions. Amen. Something funny. 